Arthritic pain in my fingers, in my back, and in my legs. In my back and in my legs. Jeez. Everything's triggering all at once here. This is the 420 Radio Show. We are live on lifestyleradio.ca or dot net. Um, Jess, where are you? And Elizabeth Crichton will be along shortly, as will Justin Kander. He, they're going to chat about a s- whole bunch of stuff today. And I shouldn't have lit this joint just before we went on the air. <laughs> Hi, Al. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. So, how are you, Je- uh, uh, uh What's your name again? There, uh, Lori. Lori, thank you. <laughs> I'm not bad, you. <laughs> I'm all right. Uh, we're going to open up our uh, 800 number uh, later on in the show. But if you'd like to call and wait in line, you may go ahead. Um. What else are we going to talk about? Is. The number is on our website. Okay. That way people have to go to our website to listen. Excellent. Yeah. I listen to your website all day long. Well, how are you, Je- uh, 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 What's your name the again? Uh, Lori. Uh, Lori, thank you. There we go. We have another conversation going on. <laughs> <laughs> are we here now? I think we're here now, yeah. But we're going to be together. here. We're going to be here in a minute. All right, okay. so we're going to turn on a tune and find everybody, and then we'll be back to start the show. This is the 420 Radio Show. We're live on Lifestyle Radio. Lifestyle Radio. This is Bubbles from the Trailer Park, and they're playing some fucking excellent music on LifestyleRadio.ca. I hope I didn't sound too nervous there. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Celestia. Well, is this Sansi Rock again? I'm for your touch again. Why, oh, 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 Dream 
This is the 20 radio show. Watch what numbers you're playing out there. This, you know, we're on the air now. So, okay, which know. number do I? Um... Just one second. We're going to be right back. We're going to try and f- get our guests all straightened away. We're going to listen to some Eddie Murphy and Snoop Lion. Nice. Or 20 radio show. I think that's the good song. Radio show. I think that's the good song to listen to. Yes, I do. And 
we this are the bad. 420 radio show. We were just telling, I was just telling Jess that, that I really, really like this new Jack White album. And my Me new, too. My new favorite song is, is Lazarado, which we're going to hear later. I can't Thanks. stop playing it. Can you hear? Can you, it's called Overplay. Uh, we are, uh, we've been joined by uh, uh, Justin Kander from the, he's the webmaster of Phoenix Tears Foundation's website. And also Elizabeth Croydon. Elizabeth is a comedian, publisher, blah, 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 blah. She's also an advocate for cannabis. So welcome to the 420 Radio Show, guys. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I, I'm glad that you're, you're all here. Now, Justin, you're going to love this. While we have uh, this chat, Lori is making caps. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, hey, listen, uh, multitasking is my middle name, right? <laughs> so, Justin, tell me, uh, please, if you wouldn't mind, uh, give us an update at, at what you're up to. I know that you've been published a few more times since the last time you were on the show. Yes, yeah, so I've been doing a lot more writing for Medical Gene, and I've continued to update my report, Cannabis Extract Report. Um, and, the, you know, the things that have been going on now, the growth in the movement is just alarming. Um, you know, one of the big things is that Ricky Lake is making a documentary yep. called Weed the People about um, my friends Mara Gordon and Stuart Smith, who are treating pediatric patients with cannabis oils for cancers and other diseases. Um, that's one of the things that I'm most excited about. I also just wrote an article for Medical Gene about Nuvalex, which is aiming to use encapsulation technologies to improve the effectiveness of cannabis extract medicine because there are certainly cases where there are cancers that are hard to reach and it, you know, it just yeah. doesn't seem to be as effective in those cases. But if the uh, encapsulation technologies could be used to concentrate the medicine in those areas, then um, you know, it would work much better. Um, so wow. yeah, those are two quick, quick updates. Um, but in general, every, everything's just been going great. So much rising news, um, articles about oh, other yeah. patients using oils to fight cancers. Um, there was just a few weeks ago one on Ladybud about Logan Yule, who had terminal leukemia, um, told he was going to die, and in three months is scanning clear of cancer. Um, he's also going to be in Weed the People. Um, you know, it just keeps happening over and over. People are yeah. seeing, you know, these are reliable results. This is happening, and it needs to be given the attention it deserves. And, and I love what's going on, although I, I was talking with Elizabeth earlier. We're going backwards in here, up here in Canada, as you know. And, and oh yeah, that um, I'm, I'm familiar with a little bit. Of yeah, that. It, it, it's very sad, but it's nice to see the progress going forward as far as concentrates go and and extracts and stuff like that. Uh, Elizabeth uh, used to be involved in. She, you were involved in one of the first. Um, uh, one one of the very first compassionate care clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, that term hadn't even been coined yet in 1997 I assisted by being the hostess with the mostest in New York City cool. with Johan Moore and uh, the yippie Dana Beal and um, <laughs> those were the days when uh, AIDS patients were taking AZT cocktails to treat their disease and uh, Mayor Giuliani had a 24 hour lockup rule so that if these lawyers would step around the corner and smoke their J to get rid of the, the nausea that the AZT cocktails were giving them, they would be locked up for 24 oh. hours, and then they weren't able to get their medicine, and then they would come back to us, you know, three times as ill. And wow. It was quite a thrill to see the, the true impact of cannabis uh, on people, I mean, I you know the 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 people, the cancer patients that were unable to eat. Uh, one of the one of our patients began taking a photographic art project in hand, where he showed himself in the middle of his chemo before he had begun uh, co-treating it with cannabis, and he was emaciated and looked like he was on death's door. And then he took yeah. a picture of him smoking, and then he took a picture of him eating a sandwich. And by and he beat the cancer. And, and came, you know, by 
midway through his project, you could see the health and the life returning to his eyes. And this was in the 80s? It really no, it was in the early nineties, okay. uh nineteen ninety six, wow. ninety seven. Uh okay. and it it really opened my eyes to what can I mean cannabis can do. And you know, I began smoking as a as a juvenile delinquent. Uh <laughs> and I and I did not look at what I was doing as a medical treatment. I mean mm -hmm. I, I put mm -hmm. myself under tremendous pressure as an artist. I've been in acting and comedy for over 30 years and I would put myself under these tremendous amounts of pressure and stress and I did not look at what I was doing as medical. I just thought, oh, I'm feeling better. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and you know what? Uh, That's exactly what people exactly. need to start saying. Um, it, it, yeah. it, it's so simple. And for anybody who who knows anything about it, and if you don't know anything about it, Google it. It's called cannabis or marijuana or pot or weed, whatever you want to call it. Weed. <laughs> okay. Google I love it. the term weed because that's exactly what it is. It grows everywhere and anywhere. And it grows just like one. But you know what? I'll tell you something. Uh, one, you know, one, it's funny about that term weed actually a weed is only something that you don't want yes that's right yes, and it's that's exactly right. the opposite of weed and well, I have some, sat some there of my favorite, some of my favorite dietary foods are considered weeds well, like yeah. dandelions great mm -hmm. for right. the liver Yes, a weed. Yes. But yet, but yet, <laughs> medi it, medical. It's only a weed when it's in my rose garden. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I would love it's weed not, in it's my not rose a weed garden. When it's in my earth garden. Wouldn't it be yeah. great to graft weed and roses? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, maybe if you got like a master grafter. You could have like a, a a flowering rose with a bud right in the center of it, <laughs> which which reminds me of a really cool compassionate club. If there are any California listeners out there, there's an amazing compassionate club called Bud and Roses, uh, or Buds and Roses, which was uh, started by a fellow whose daughter uh, is in great need of the weed. Um, I also like the word weed because you have to smile when you say it. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. What, 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 what do you hear from people, Justin, in, in all your conversations? You know, I have conversations with, with Lori and Jess and other people, and I know Lori, for one, is finds the, the word weed and pot kind of derogatory, right, Lori? Well, I, I have found... That in in talking to people that um, are of the reefer madness yeah. mindset, yeah, yeah. Um, by by speaking to them about cannabis, it it almost like it's like they're almost starting to get friendly and and warm up to the idea before they realize it's pot. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And okay. and it almost makes it friendlier and more. Um, I find. We I have find to think about who our audience is when we're speaking. That's right, them. and right. I find when yeah. I'm having a yeah. conversation, I mean, I, when I have a conversation with this person, I call it like with my buddy down the road, I call it pot. When I yeah. when I'm having a conversation with Lori, I call it cannabis. You know. Yeah, when I, as my profession is a comedian, so I I am allowed a certain amount of professional irresponsibility. <laughs> but uh, you know, my job is to be irreverent. But my buddy Adam Eidinger and uh, the DCMJ cannabis campaign to go fully with full legalization in Washington DC they're very careful and they use the word cannabis yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know which is which is a really nice word and it takes away although a lot of people are not aware it takes away the racial slur of marijuana uh, yeah a lot of people don't know the word cannabis as well it's true right it's That's very true it, yeah. And they, they need to understand that because you got the c cannabinoid receptors yeah. in your brain. So the two of them are very simpatico. I'm stimulating those right, right now. You know. <laughs> well, and to quote something, um, a friend of ours, uh, Dr. Sunil Agarwal from, uh, I believe he's at NYU um, in New York there. He, uh, I was listening to a, 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 an address that he gave at Albert Einstein um, 
Institute, and he was telling the people in the class that they should use the word cannabis because when you give your patient morphine, you don't tell them you're giving them a prescription for smack. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Makes right. sense. <laughs> Unless they're a comic. I mean, my, right. <laughs> <laughs> My whole thing, you know, and, and there's a reason why I like to call it weed. I mean, it's been around forever, and there's a whole tradition that's being ignored. Uh, you know, like the, the, the poor 1960s vets are, are being ignored, and, and they were some of the first pioneers in right. post-traumatic stress disorder. They called it weed. Yep, that's you know, right. One of my I, issues. I say is that I like to say once a pothead, always a pothead. You know, amen I mean, and a for, women, you know. and a couple a couple <laughs> sheep plants if you can afford to grow your own. You know, yeah. that's the other concern that I have, which is why I primarily refer to it as weed, and weed are the world because. Uh, you know, my concern with this green rush is that it's going to become unaccept unaccessible to uh, the poverty-stricken family that yeah. has been using yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, exactly. it needs. We need to. Uh, th that's why I fell in love with uh, Safe Access Now. Dot org. Uh, we, we need to make certain that it remains accessible and affordable to patients. What, um, Absolutely. What is happening at uh, Phoenix Tears these days? I know that, that um, there's a lot of families moving into Colorado now, eh? Yes, sir. The Phoenix Tears Foundation is um, doing a lot of work in Colorado, including to help uh, some of the families relocating. They had they released a press release um, about welcoming the warrior family um, who uh, has a child with, you know, one of the rare and tractable forms of epilepsy. Um, they're also doing the Phoenix 5 project, which is treating five terminal cancer patients from start to finish so that uh -huh. people can, you know, see it as it happens. Yeah. Um, because that's the most compelling thing. When you see someone start the treatment, they're told they're terminal, and then you see those results. That's the most compelling. And there's been two updates released so far. One, um, I believe it was col colorectal or colon cancer. Um, she's feeling a lot better um, overall, just like night and day. But the most stunning update was on um, this guy, David Atkins, who had a spinal tumor stretching from T2 to T7 um, up his spine. Wow. Um, it was either going to paralyze him or kill him. And in only seven weeks of cannabis extract treatment, the tumor is gone. Wow. Um, so that, uh, that update is, you know, it's out there on YouTube. It's in my report. Um, so, yeah, Phoenix Tear. And another thing is they're working with Cannabis Science um, to do awesome. skin cancer trials in Colombia. So, you know, just prove it once and for all that it works against skin cancer. Um, so um, those are basically the two main projects, go projects going on right now, the Phoenix Five and the Columbia Skin Cancer Trials, and I'm really excited about both of them. And, and, I, and I'm really excited about those projects and about the word getting out further. I, I've seen from my own eyes uh, skin cancer t tumors shrink with the application of the high concentrated oil. And... Uh, I was curious if in the Phoenix Tears Foundation, if anyone had ever heard of the, the filmmakers, uh, Trey Booth and, and Kevin Booth from Sacred Cow Productions. They Yes, yes. They, their last movie followed the story of an infant that had been uh, diagnosed with a rare cancer. Uh, Cat and she had had over 300 seizures a day. And the cannabis was able to slow that down, and it, you know it was, and there was marked improvement in her cannabis treatments. They were using a combination of chemo and cannabis, and it's unfortunate that the strain on the infant body, you know, for caused her to pass away. But there, it was docu documented improvement that the cannabis was making a difference where the chemotherapy was unable to. And it's so hopeful. So that was a wait. That was American Drug War too, right? Because Kevin Booth. That's right. Uh, American Drug War too. So yeah, that actually, yeah, that um, I don't know about the, a girl, but I know that you know the Cash Hyde was definitely in that. Um, he had a rare brain tumor and was on the verge of death. 
and Mike Hyde began uh, secretly administering cannabis oil to the feeding tube, and he immediately started improving, was able to get off all his anti-nausea and pain medication, yes. um, and the tumor started shrinking, and he was eventually pronounced cancer-free. Um, so his situation was unique in that as soon as he, basically as soon as he was pronounced cancer-free, um, he, they lost access to cannabis oil, yep. and the cancer came back. Yep. Um, they then went to California to do a combination of proton therapy and the oil, even though the doctor said the proton therapy probably wouldn't work. Um, he used it along with the oil and yet again beat the cancer without needing any anti-nausea um, medications, which was incredible. And then yet again lost access to the medicine and the cancer came back. And wow. then he wasn't able to get any more and he did die. Yeah. Um, and his, you know, his case shows that you, even once the cancer is gone, you need to keep a maintenance dose going. And I've yeah. seen this before because there are still residual cancer cells in the body. There's always cancer cells in the body for one thing. And if you've had cancer before, then your risk of it returning is much higher. But people who stay on a maintenance dose, I've never heard of, you know, the cancer coming back. And there are many people who don't take maintenance doses and the cancer doesn't come back. But, you know, when it's your life, you don't want to take any chances. Um, and also in regards to cash hide, there was a great article on vice.com just two days ago um, about, it's called uh, Families Desperately Seeking CBD. And it starts off with cash hide story and how he responded so well to the high THC medicine. Um, but, you know, THC and CBD are both important and have uh, their own applications. I followed Cashy's mm-hmm. story right from the right from the get go, and I I was so happy to see it working because I mean they made it very very public what they were doing. And, mm. and Justin, I, are you aware of the uh, when, little girl? I think she had um, leukemia in Toronto, and they the doctor documented even though I mean he wasn't administering the cannabis oil, he documented it. And they also noticed that when she, they changed the strain, that um, her results changed. That she, she had great success with the oil, but then when they changed the strain, it changed the success, and then they switched back again. Do you know the study I'm talking about? I'm extremely certain that you're referring to the November 2013 case reports in oncology study, um, which is, I mean, that, you know, that's the, the one case that truly is fully documented. Um, and it, it literal, like, I don't understand why that hasn't gotten more attention. It is, it is literal proof yeah. that at least in the case of acute lymphoblastic leukemia, cannabis extracts do work. No chemotherapy had been effective in reducing the leukemic blast cells. And with, right. within days of starting the oil, it plumped and by day 39 of the treatment, there were only like 300 blast cells left where, um, you know, the peak had been 374,000. And, and an, another thing is that you're right, the changing the strains and changing the dosage did have an effect on the leukemic blast cell count. And that's how they knew it was the cannabis oil and um, not spontaneous remission. It ruled out spontaneous remission right. as a cause because there was a dose-dependent relationship. So, you know, a lot of people say, you know, uh, with cannabis oils, you know, you don't know if it's, um, you know, it could have been spontaneous remission, which is just, uh, it's bullshit with all these cases and the, the immediacy of these effects. And, you know, calling all this spontaneous remission is, is just not true and it's irresponsible to say that. What? But wait a second, though. Spontaneous remission does happen. Yes, so, absolutely. You know, you have to like uh, this is this is the thing we have to remember that too. I mean, I understand I, what Justin's saying, though, is that yeah. the the result of that specific trial is that with that one for that sure was dependent on the actual yeah. administration yeah. of the cannabis oil. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, I concur. And the, but yeah. that is a problem because there is spontaneous remission, and sometimes we don't really know. Um, it's, no, it's a matter of the number of cases. Yeah, that's the key. Right. All, over right. all all these years, seeing so many cases, you know, when you yeah. look at the details, it's, it's very clear that there's something going on when it's yeah. examined holistically. Yeah, you know, and when I'm speaking to patients, I always tell them, you know, there is a chance that it could be spontaneous remission, but why take the chance and not stay on a maintenance dose anyway? Why right. wouldn't somebody? Why wouldn't somebody stay on the maintenance dose? Um, because other, they're not other than finances, lovers. other than finances, yeah, that's an issue that I have uh, with my father. Um, recently, he was on a wretched chemical drug that was uh, interfering with his cognizant abilities and. You know, I was My nervous that it was that dementia. Well. He's been off of it for two weeks now, and he's returned to the dad I know, mm. 
but with over living with over 47 years of multiple sclerosis symptoms I have constantly worked to get him to try a brownie um, to see if that helps with some of his issues and I run into the entrenched 1950s 60s uh -huh. mentality right. yep. and uh, and with his legal service to the government but this is not something he can have as an option because of its legal status which right. breaks my heart oh for right. sure that's hugely right. limiting and prohibitive for so many people you know and um you know anybody in any kind of position where they administer um drug tests on any kind of a regular basis, yeah. anybody of any sort mm -hmm. of um, technical or, or high risk position or anything like that, yeah. And um, I think th the proof of the efficacy and safety of it, we have, it, it's tantamount, we have to force that as being like, you know, um, I, I, w I had the occasion to talk to a doctor I was uh, on a panel with there back in Oh gee, when was that? I guess in the first April, um, and and he had admitted to me that he'd only ever allowed two patients to use cannabis here in Canada, even though it's been allowed for many many years, um, and only because they had cancer, only because they were terminal, and only because there was nothing else that was alleviating the side effects of the cancer treatments. You're inspiring um, me to inform you guys, in case you're not aware. Uh, that the DEA has begun harassing uh, our PhD physicians yep, that are recommending marijuana mm -hmm. to their patients. Oh God! And or uh, who are involved in uh, cannabis businesses? That's right. actually in the news. That's coming up. That's one of our stories that we're about to do. Yeah, and I think oh, that's disgusting. God. They're it's kind vulgar. of doing that here in Canada too, though, aren't they, Jess? Well, they oh. are. Yeah, they are. Yeah. In fact, they've stopped um, physicians from. Uh, recommending cannabis from one province to another. It yeah. used to be that we could do that and, and in fact we can still s Skype for some reason from one province to another but a doctor even though he's registered with the Royal College of Physicians in Canada now can no longer you know, go to another province and recommend cannabis. Jesus. Well, right. uh, pardon my New York French when I say fuck that shit. Yeah. There but you yet, go. Yeah. But yet they can do it on Skype. This is what amazes me. Yeah, it's dependent on what province your ass is sitting in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so right. if your ass is in the province that you're licensed in, you're good to go. Mm. Now, I have noticed that um, one of the provinces, I believe it was Quebec, um, there was an article in the last week where their doctors are very concerned about the fact that patients in Quebec are being signed by doctors in other provinces. Right. They have an entirely different legal system than the rest of the country, a different right. constitution, and so yeah. um, their, their crackdown on cannabis is way harder than the rest of the, pro rest of the country. For that's some, true. It's not benefiting them, that's for sure. Now, Saskatchewan did take the um, for thinking measure of actually reviewing the situation and making directives for their doctors and I was kind of um, they didn't say that they couldn't recommend it what they said was that if you are going to recommend cannabis to patients you are not allowed to be involved with some business that is also selling it or reselling it or which is under. such hypocrisy because you have right. all of these pharmaceutical sales reps running around spending big money scheduling lunches with doctors yeah. specifically for them to recommend their debilitating MS drug or their pseudo uh, effective cancer drug or right. the latest antidepressant. So, you know, to say that doctors shouldn't be affiliated with a specific outlet or a specific grower is just poppycock. Yes. So, hey, Justin, I know you can't stay very long, but, um, I, I mean, I, I haven't spoken to you before, but I immediately noticed, like, your ability to recall information and... Uh, huh. And draw upon it. So, what's your background? You, like, you seem ex in, in, extremely informed. Well, yeah, so um, I got involved six years ago. I saw Run From The Cure, 
March 3rd, 2008. I know because I made a post responding to the thread. Um, so yeah, and I, you know, I just followed the movement, um, you know, from the beginning, saw it grow, you know, from literally that one video, you know, other people started making posts on forums. There were other uh, documentaries like Sure to Cannabis Story and Vitamin Cannabis. Um, and then I would say things really exploded, um, you know, last August with the Sanjay Gupta documentary and the use of the high CBD oils to, uh, you know, fight epilepsy, which in my opinion is even more amazing than cancer because cancer is something that we, um, you know, understand a little better, you know, cells go malignant and you need to kill those cells, but epilepsy is just so complex. And I knew that, you know, that was the moment when people would really start taking this seriously. Um, and then I made cannabis extract report.com, um, where I wrote that report for the reform conference in Denver, um, put on by DPA. And I've just been updated, updating it. And, um, you know, collecting more information ever since. And, you know, just from being surrounded, like the reason that I remember things, you know, a lot of details is because, you know, I've just been looking over, uh, you know, so many cases and, you know, some cases that, like the case reports on oncology stuff that I've looked over, you know, like dozens of times. So, right. you know, this has really become second nature to me. A lot of the patient cases, you know, the protocols re- relating to the oil, um, and yeah, just following it, you know, every case and, you know, trying to become involved wherever I can has gotten me this far to where, um, you know, I am the webmaster for Phoenix Tears Foundation and um, I have, you know, so many other amazing contacts. I'm, I'm very fortunate for, you know, how far I've come in this. Are, are you, you're in Denver? Is that where you're located? I am actually in College Park, Maryland, which is right outside of D.C. Oh, I'm about to move. Pone. We have to get together before you move. I'm one of your neighbors. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm in Kensington, Maryland right now. Oh, wow, that is close. (laughs) (laughs) You never know. I'm trying to move that one, though. We'll have to medicate. Uh, (laughs) I I just got in from L.A., and I'm uh, taking my first trip to Denver this summer, so... Uh, we'll definitely have to exchange information through through our hosts today. Absolutely, you you you're a really awesome and funny person. I would definitely <laughs> love to love to meet you at some point. Uh, thank you. Smooth talker, <laughs> eh? He's a smooth talker too. Yeah. Man. <laughs> you know, Justin, I I I've got to say I admire what you've done so far, my friend. Uh, Justin's only in his twenties. Hey, can I and, have a? Yeah. I'd like to. And he's Justin just, a question, oh, man. sure, you go right ahead. Yeah, Feel so free. You're in College Park, man. Uh, do, you, do you know what the dealio is with Maryland University and their medical department? Are they doing anything with cannabis? What's what's the what's the college campus there feel like? Well, um, I was for I graduated last year. I was part of Students for Sensible Drug Policy, the U University of Maryland uh, chat. Yeah, they're absolutely amazing. I definitely would not be here without them. Um, but yeah, so I was part of them. In terms of like medical research um, that the uni- that the campus is doing, I'm pretty sure that they're not doing any slash. I'm not aware of it, but um, I know I've seen you know a lot of general progress, um, like Good Samaritan policies that like SSDP fought hard for that, so that if people um, overdose on alcohol or other drugs that they can. Um, you know, call for help without having fear of punishment. Yeah. Um, there's also been, there's been a strong push to equal, you know, reduce the penalties for a cannabis possession on campus to so people don't get kicked out of their dorms. Um, I, I, nothing has happened with that yet, but since, you know, Maryland is about to decriminalize up to 10 grams in October, um, I'm hopeful that, you know, this, this chapter will help equalize the penalties from the campus. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's the, general, uh, the general state of things here. Yeah, I, I used to get high with this cat in high school, and uh, he won, He won. you know, he went to Good Council High School, and he won the Good Christian Gentleman Award, and he had an A-plus average, and went on to be one of the best musicians in the country. Uh, you know, s- some people thrive on on studying some people can work very well under the influence of cannabis you know other people I can can't. tell you that I did <laughs> I, I can tell you that I do as well sir <laughs> and me for sure that's the only way I got through college I got to say <laughs> yeah. 
there I think there is something now I'm speaking specifically from my personal experience but I think there there is definitely something to be said for a good sativa when you are pressuring your brain to absorb knowledge it seems to, or or to create a story it's it seems to provide a cerebral uh relief um for sure so, so you're able to, you know, uh, memorize that book of macroeconomics in an evening. So, cool. oh, Elizabeth, I can see a picture of you and a little girl. Uh, is that your daughter? No, that's uh, the daughter of a very dear friend of mine, Adam Eidinger, who's a longtime activist. He's uh, the spokesperson for Dr. Bronner's Hemp Soap. Oh, uh, which is, oh yay! Which, yeah, <laughs> yay for sure. The it's cannabis like, plants love Dr. Bronner's. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I mean, what what a pioneer! Um, <laughs> he goes to India to make his soap, uh, and I believe that the hemp that he uses is grown out out, out in India at the moment. Uh, Adam would be the expert, but that is Adam's daughter, Arundhati Roy. Um, and uh, she's just a joy to be around. And Adam is a crazy m mofo activist. Uh, I met him in uh, the year 2000, and about 150 of us organized the core circle that protested against uh, George Bush's selection to the White House. And uh, he executes his activism through great theatrics. And he and Dr. Bronner. And I believe Ben Droz, uh I could be wrong about Ben Droz. That. Do you know Ben Droz? I love the uh, Ben Droz. I, yeah, he I'm familiar. I know, uh, you know, he works for, is it Vote Hemp? I mean, he's yes, like the he main he, uh, he, hemp he's, activist. He's the main lobbyist for Vote Hemp. He does fantastic work. and he I takes, met him at my friend Stacia's birthday party. Uh, he's really high cool. energy. <laughs> yeah, he is he's total high energy. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, I, I love I love uh, partying with that guy, and I'm always flattered when he comes out to a comedy show. But uh, at any rate, Adam and Dr. Bronner, along with uh, some other hemp farmers, went down to, I believe, the Department of Justice and planted hemp seeds on their front lawn with uh, ceremonial shovels and of course oh, yeah, got arrested. back in 2012 <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah of course of course got arrested and uh you know most recently my biggest fear in the if you'll pardon my comedy weed industry is that Monsanto will start fucking with GMOs and weed Ma Monsanto already <laughs> is Monsanto oh. ah. <laughs> in Uruguay have teamed up Oh no! Yeah, that's the whole deal with Uruguay and the government test project to grow uh, weed for the people. It's uh, a it's a Monsanto endeavor. Oh, oh my goodness! I'll have yeah. to look at that very careful. I, yeah, I wouldn't mind the super weed seed, but I definitely mind the suicide weed seed. You, you know, Monsanto uh. had to get involved. There's no way that they would let the most spectacular plant on the planet, you know, go by them. Well, you know, they, I pulled the wool <laughs> over my own eyes and was resting in the safety of my own delusions, hoping <laughs> to you know, focus on oranges as they've done for so many years. <laughs> <Come> <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but my, my favorite caper Adam and I recently pulled was with the organic food lobby. We dropped $2,000 from the top of the Hart Senate building, which is where a lot of the lobbying is done, uh, after giving false awards to all the office holders that claimed they were, you know, that were doing their best to be subtle about accepting Monsanto campaign money. And we, we rolled around in the money on the floor and, uh, and got arrested. The Secret Service came and applauded me, so uh, there are a lot of people on our side that can't speak <laughs> out. And uh, Adam and the DCMJ.org organization that are, are, are right now in full, in full force getting the petition for Prop 71 for legalization to be on the ballot, right now they're finding uh, that it's hard for Washingtonians to come out of the weed closet. Right. Uh, it is a very deep, dark weed closet. I mean, it's so deep you can see Narnia. Uh, <laughs> in fact, often I go in the weed closet just to smoke with Aslan. But, 
But, uh, you know, I, I, I grew up here, so I know all the stoners, and I know I know where they are, I know where they work, I know they're at NIH, I know they're planted in the Department of Justice, I know that certain security officers are winding down their day with weed. Right. Uh, but Adam and his crew are, they're relentless, I believe they've passed their halfway mark on the signatures, uh, but they are still finding people that won't sign because of what they do. They're afraid of being fired. They're, right. you know, yeah. they've, they've kept their... I, I wish I could have been subtle about my weed use, but uh, clearly I like to share. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, I'd have a high-paying job in the private sector of our government. Right. But, uh, you know, one of the things that that I've seen done. I was training in Aikido. I've trained in Aikido for over 20 years, and one of my senseis was Steven Seagal, and the, I train at the international headquarters here. I knew a cat who went on narcotic raids, and uh, he was the first cat in the door on narcotic raids, and this cat would come to our mat with the shakes. And finally, one day, I just said, you know, look, what what is your problem with cannabis? You know, is that something that you are very much against? And and he spoke about, you know, not really being against that per se. He's more or less fighting the destruction uh, that is caused by meth, by yeah. uh, heroin. And yeah. I said to him, you know, well, let's fuck beer night. Why don't you just smoke this doobie with me? It's a hybrid of sativa sure. and uh, and and uh, indica. Right. And his shakes went away. He, yeah. He's now a patient. And to to see at a at, at a confidential compassionate care club. But to see that change in, in the in the man that's the first through the door that has to decide who gets shot and who does not get shot, to see right. him benefit, well, it's it's outrageous to me that he does not have access to something that is helping him. Yeah, for sure. And so many like him. There's so yeah. many people still that, that you know, I, I'm really blessed. I live, you know, even though they're trying to take away my right to grow, I still have a license to possess, and even though I think that having a license and regulating humans is disgusting, <laughs> I, I'm still yeah. very grateful that I have access to this medicine. Well, what's and going down with your license to grow? What well, here in Canada, our government gave us for, I think, almost 10 years our right to grow our own medicine. I think it was 13. 13 yeah. years, yeah. thank you. Um, and. Uh, they recently decided uh, that the only people that would grow medicine for us would be ones that they had licensed commercially. Oh, man. And so basically, Health Canada took the medical marijuana program and transferred it over to Industry Canada. It's terrible. And, right. And it makes so, me cry. <laughs> but it's like the program, the, the problem is the first program was designed to fail, and yet we made it work. And now this problem, I believe, is exactly. designed to fail, and they're going to hand out so many licenses that it's going to fall apart because it's done for the you know benefit of profit instead of you know. Well, well good luck trying to st you know stopping people from growing. It is a weed, <laughs> and it, and it is it is culturally embedded, say, in the entire Latino community. When right. I when I lived in New Mexico. Uh, I was uh, making part of my living doing political consulting for, for candidates. And these people would come into my home and I'd show them the Steven Seagal photos and the po photos of me with Secretary Normanetta and yeah. Congressman Mike Honda and pull out the whole show, I'm so influential and blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> and they'd be like, is that you and Cheech and Chong? <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah. And they'd go, I'll listen to whatever you have to say. <laughs> Just tell me what to do. I have a great love of pot culture. I know that's some people have a little bit of a problem because they're working so hard as medical marijuana activists. Right. But, and get, so it really get, does. They get that, that stick up their ass. So often yeah. because 
goodness knows you're not supposed to like your medicine. Right. That, exactly. So, so, you yeah. know, that opens a whole topic that, uh, that opens a very important topic about health and about well-being. Mm -hmm. And it gets into the psychology of Hegel. Uh, what, you know, right. fun and laughter does heal. Right. Uh, enjoying yourself is important. If you need to write at a computer standing up while you're at work, why can't you write at a computer standing up at work? Why do you have to be in this, you know, German psychologist invented cubicle? I, I don't know right. if you know who Hegel is, but he's yes. this psychologist uh -huh. that invented the discomfort to create the idea that you are smaller than the system you're up against. So. If you've got right, a big right. desk in front of you for a job interview and you're in a tiny, uncomfortable chair, that's Hegel. And yeah. uh, and that is madness to me. Uh, you talk to the greatest minds in in learning and absorbing, and they will tell you, you, you study your neuroscience for 45 minutes, and then you take 15 minutes to go juggle. <laughs> and for people to laugh at that, people, you know, I think that one of the biggest reasons why cannabis, weed, marijuana, Mary Jane is uh, greeted Scooby with Scooby-Doo, don't forget that one, Scooby-Doo. Yes, Sco <laughs> and the Scooby Snacks are, 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 are greeted with such uh, dismay is that the most rebellious thing you can personally do is be happy. Exactly. <laughs> Authority doesn't like it when you're enjoying yourself. Right. Uh, they yeah. like it when you're under uh, pressure and mm -hmm. feel their authority. Mm -hmm. Because if you're happy, you run the risk of saying, fuck you, Jack, I don't like the way you're running things. Right. Right. But on the other hand, if you are happy and enjoying yourself, and you do take the 15 minutes to juggle after studying your neuroscience, if studies have shown that that increases your workload. Yeah. So, <laughs> something's got to give there, man. Yeah. And, and why not enjoy your medicine? Mm -hmm. I, oh, for know, sure. I have a very rare anxiety disorder. Uh and uh, people don't notice it because, as, as you've probably ascertained, I'm highly social. <laughs> <laughs> I have no, I can handle people the way some people can handle bank accounts. Um, and I worked as a professional psychic for over 20 years. Wow. Um, yes. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll tell you a story about that, that which is cannabis related. But okay. <laughs> You know, I have been in my business as a, a on because I live my life on the double D list. So I'm a loud mouthed, big breasted woman. I have been assaulted over 16 times in my profession. So as a public figure, I'm putting myself out there for anywhere between two people late night at the comedy store at 1 a.m. to, you know, a couple thousand people at the July 4th smoke in. Uh, to to be available and and you make someone feel good they don't want to get off the ride or you upset someone and they want to make certain that yep. they never speak again yep. and I run the issue every time I go into comedy am I going to be hit will my tits be grabbed and shaken and and it is yes. <laughs> you know if I smoke the right sativa. <laughs> And I like the strain. It doesn't sound very medical, but I love the strain train wreck. Me too. Me too. Me too. I'm very okay. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I recognize, okay, that's a possibility, but I don't, I don't fret about it. It doesn't repeat in my head over and over again. I don't live in the terror of that anxiety. Right. Um, and so that's important. Right. <laughs> Did you catch that recovery, Lori? It was like me at Parliament. <laughs> what was I thinking? Oh. But you know, when I went out for the job as a professional psychic, I was very young. I'm I'm 43 now. I was 19 when I went out for this job, and uh, I was an incredible smart ass. And I I said, okay, no, well, I, I've really? been acting. Are so you I kidding can, me? I, I'll memorize <laughs> these cards and these archetypes, and I'll bullshit my way through this job. <laughs> well, my buddy took me up on the roof before my job interview. The job interview 
uh, consisted of reading my boss's cards, and he got me really high. Oh my gosh, mendacity! I love this buzz. And I came back to the room to read my boss's cards. I had bought an herbal tarot set. How fitting for this show. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm reading the cards, and my little bullshit voice that I usually listen to in order to say the right thing to get out of not doing my algebra homework uh, that day starts talking to me. And I'm telling this woman that the nine of sage means that there are actually three lawyers instead of five lawyers. And I'm like, wow, you know, you are really slinging the the, the bullshit this time, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you get hired, you know. Because <laughs> I got really specific. And she went around the circle and she was like, you, 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 you can go. You, 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 you're hired. You. And she points to me. You come to my office. And I'm like, oh, buzz me. I am busted. She smells the (laughs) weed. She's going to get on me for smoking weed. I'm not going to turn in my buddy. And and, and she sits sits me down and she goes, what do you mean my husband has five lawyers instead of just the ones I know about? (laughs) And uh, you know, I was like, "Uh, I don't really know. Uh, I thought I was bullshitting you. Uh, and she she goes, please get on the phones right now. You're welcome to work in this office. And uh, you know that went that I, I found that continuing through this <laughs> job as a psychic uh, phone line. I started on a phone line, uh, and I and I found that sativa for whatever reason assisted with the neuro the the, the <laughs> neurological connections and the neuroactivity that was necessary to do this. Oh yeah, it helps to hook up those pathways really well. <laughs> yes. And then we get into the I'm sorry, please I was <laughs> I was just gonna say I do database design and believe me, yeah, it works really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, and and then we get into the you know, we get into the area that maps dot uh, org is working on the psychedelic community is working on and, and we start talking about uh, mushrooms growing new neural pathways I mean, Ooh, my favorite I've seen, artic- yeah. I've seen several yeah. articles <laughs> about that actually. give me mushrooms and a Grateful Dead show and I will heal the sick I have one qu- quick question for you Elizabeth about yeah. mushrooms all right, all right, I, I've never done the Amanita Muscura mushroom would you try that? Uh, I believe I have tried that in Ooh. ceremony. <laughs> I was really fortunate. I started my psychedelic experience right before uh, Dr. Timothy Leary died, and I got to I got to do the psychedelic exper- experience with him and wow. a bunch of heads that were trained. I mean, and wow. I'm very grateful for that because I entered it in a sacred ceremony and I understood the different stages that you would go through instead of you know just some Jane Doe who takes it uh, for to enjoy a concert and leaves herself open to all kinds of chaos you know there was He's a hanging on for dear life the entire time you mean right right <laughs> exactly exactly because yeah, you know really. It, it it really does it really can take you through different levels of your subconscious that you may not be prepared to handle but I do know this one case. I was out in by the Joshua Tree uh, for the Graham a Graham Nash music concert. Nice. And uh, the 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 female producer of that show had told me she had gotten into a car wreck, and all of the science, all of the doctors said that she'd never be able to speak again, nor would she be able to touch her nose with her finger. When she would go to do that her finger would only go to her shoulder it would not get near her nose and her talking was so uh, disorderly that that she <coughs> could not make sense of what she was working to communicate she went into a tent with a shaman and some shrooms and she came back uh... with full speech wow. and she was able to take her finger and touch the side of her nose 
Great. Wow. Awesome. So, wow. And, That's awesome. And, and, you know, so if you're in the right, it's like, you know, I think it's very important that you be, you know, that everything be medical and attended. Like, I, I did it in a sacred ceremony, and so I think I grew the right neural pathways with the 500 shamanic drummers playing, you know, the Afri West African beats and, and people paying attention to what the proper amounts of vitamin C that's important. All of those things, the, the, the water that make, keeps you hydrated, all of those things are critical. But, you know, you take, you take a mushroom and you listen to, say, uh, G.G. Allen in the middle, <laughs> in the, in the middle, in the middle of an industrial <laughs> steam park, you know, Whoa. you may walk away going, I talk to Satan. So, <laughs> you know, because these all these neural pathways and neuroscience are tying into quantum physics and who knows what, what goes on. <laughs> I, I was able to pull stuff from the psychic line, people on the phone saying, you know, I think you sell satellites. Yes, I do sell satellites. <laughs> How did, you know, we were just putting our minds together in the same way, but we were able to pull that. So, you know, and I'm I'm quite frankly, while I'm into it, I'm into it, the medical marijuana fight. I am bored with the medical marijuana Me fight. Me too. It's the yeah, mushroom I'm bored fight with now. It too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we're moving uh -huh. on. I know. <laughs> well, I'd like to move on, but the turgid bureaucracy. There's, the still, there's still work within the cannabis movement left to do. That's the thing. There's yes. still lots of work for everybody. Yes. So, uh, Alice saying he wants to uh, take a break. Yeah, sure. I think we should. We've been yapping for a while. I, I want to ask Justin a few more questions. Oh, I definitely want to ask. I've got a couple of questions that I'd like to ask Justin as well. And, um, uh, yeah, we're going to take a, a little break here. And um, before we go, i I, I got to say happy birthday to Jess. Aww. Um, Aww. And um, <laughs> uh, just trying to find my stuff here. So I'm umming and ahhing. Jesus. <laughs> Stupid 1970s mouse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to listen. We're going to uh, take a break. We're going to listen to uh, the news that Jess has done. And we're going to listen to some Jack White. And we're going to oh, have a yeah. pee and have some munchies. And then we're going to be back with uh, Elizabeth and Justin to talk some more about Weed <laughs> on the 420 radio show. We'll be back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. So what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. Why not? Trying to get on the Slice Down Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, I might have it. You might have it. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Hi, it's June the 11th, 2014. I'm Peter speaking for 420 Jess and this is the news on the 420 radio show. In Montreal, WCAX.com reports, the search widened Sunday for three inmates who escaped with the help of a helicopter from a detention center in Quebec City a day earlier. It was the second helicopter-aided inmate escape in Quebec province in two years. The three men escaped from the Orsanville detention center in suburban Quebec City around 7.45 p.m. Saturday with the help of a green-colored helicopter. The chopper landed in the courtyard of the detention center, which is barbed wire fencing and a watch post, and then quickly took off with the three inmates, heading west toward Montreal, police said. Authorities were put on alert across Quebec, in the rest of Canada, and in the United States, according to provincial police. We have cooperation with all the police forces across the country and abroad also, said Sergeant Gregory Gomez. We have many, many officers who are scattering all the areas possible. Investigators are, of course, checking every lead. Police were reluctant to provide many details about their investigation for fear the escapees could be monitoring media reports. The escapees were originally arrested on drug trafficking and gangsterism charges in 2010, according to police. Dennis and Lifber were subsequently charged with murder, according to the Quebec Provincial Police website. Police said the men were swept up in a major 2010 police operation dud project Crayfish aimed at bringing down a drug trafficking ring in northwestern Quebec. During the raid, police made 51 arrests along with money and drugs, police said. They also seized a plane and a helicopter. The status of the men's cases in the court system was not immediately clear. Provincial jails in Canada normally house people awaiting trial or those serving sentences of up to two years. 
Police released photos of the three men on social media and appealed to the public for help, but warned anyone who spotted them not to approach and immediately contact police. Audrey Ann Bilodo, another police spokeswoman, said Saturday that police were working with surrounding airports and Quebec's Volcartier military base to help track down the helicopter. The Orsanville Detention Center, about 10 kilometers from the center of Quebec City, can hold up to 710 offenders. An online report from the joint blog reports, a new study published ahead of print by Neuropsychopharmacology, the official publication of the American College of Neuropsychopharmacology, has determined that cannabinoids can help treat, or even prevent, the effects of PTSD. Scientists from the Department of Psychology of the University of Haifa in Israel examined rat models suffering from shock-induced PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. The rats were each given an injection of either a cannabinoid receptor agonist, a substance that mimics the effects of cannabis, or a controlled placebo two hours after the shock. After a week the scientists examined the rats and found that the initial shock coupled with situational reminders of the trauma caused lasting alterations in emotional processing in the mice, as well as impaired extinction of the traumatic event, lasting fear, enhanced latency to startle, impaired plasticity in the hippocampal accumbens pathway and altered expression of CB1 receptors and glucocorticoid receptors in multiple areas of the brain. Results for the rats that had been given the cannabinoid agonist showed that the agonist prevented the effects the shock had on emotional processing, extinction, plasticity and startle response, and corrected abnormalities in the CO1 and frontal cortex areas of the brain. Post-traumatic stress disorder affects roughly 7.7 .7 million adults in the United States, and symptoms can range from insomnia, depression and anxiety to flashbacks, self-destructive behavior and even suicidal thoughts and tendencies. And in the U.S., the Boston Globe reports, Drug Enforcement Administration investigators have visited the homes and offices of Massachusetts physicians involved with medical marijuana dispensaries and delivered an ultimatum, sever all ties to marijuana companies, or relinquish federal licenses to prescribe certain medications, according to several physicians and their attorneys. The stark choice is necessary, the doctors said they were told, because of friction between federal law, which bans any use of marijuana, and state law which voters changed in 2012 to allow medical use of the drug. The dose action has left some doctors, whose livelihoods depend on being able to offer patients pain medications and other drugs, with little option but to resign from the marijuana companies, where some held prominent positions. The Globe this week identified at least three doctors contacted by DEA investigators, although there may be more. Here are your options. Dr. Samuel Mazer said he was told by a DEA investigator from the New England Division Office. You either give up your license or give up your position on the board or you challenge it in court. Mazer, chief executive of debilitating medical conditions treatment centers, which won preliminary state approval to open a dispensary in Holyoke, said the DOE investigator's visit came shortly after state regulators announced the first 20 applicants approved for provisional licenses for medical marijuana dispensaries. Mazer said he returned from vacation in February to find a Doe business card on the door to his home and several messages on his answering machine urging him to contact the agency immediately. The quiet DEA crackdown comes even as the U.S. House of Representatives approved a measure last week that would restrict the DEA from raiding medical marijuana operations in states where it is legal. Senate action is pending. Tensions between federal and state officials have flared as 22 states, including Massachusetts, have legalized medical marijuana, many since 2010. A spokesman for the DEA in Boston on Wednesday referred calls to agency headquarters in Washington. A DEA spokeswoman in Washington declined to answer questions Thursday about the doctor's assertions that they are being asked to choose between their drug prescribing licenses and their ties to dispensaries. The spokeswoman would not say whether the action in Massachusetts is part of a national policy or limited to the state. Physicians, dentists, and other health care providers who prescribe or administer narcotics and other controlled substances are required to register with the DEA, which tracks use of the drugs and strips federal licenses of those who fraudulently prescribe the medications. At least two physicians resigned their medical officer positions with planned medical marijuana dispensaries in the past two weeks after visits from the DEA in Denver 9 News tells us, in a move that could threaten the state's entire legal marijuana system. A Colorado lawyer claims that requiring pot companies to pay taxes violates the United States Constitution. Attorney Rob Corey is asking the Denver District Court to block marijuana taxes in Colorado, with the lawsuit Colorado's tax system violates the Fifth Amendment, 
which protects people from self-incrimination. Corey argues that when marijuana growers and sellers pay their taxes, they effectively incriminate themselves under federal law, which still bans marijuana. Corey says he's concerned that the taxes on pot are so heavy that they undermine the goal of legalizing the drug in the first place. It's pretty clear that the black market never going to go away with these taxes, said Corey, who is seeking a preliminary injunction to block the state from collecting tax on pot as part of his case. If the injunction is denied, Corey tells Nine News he'll advise pot shops to stop paying their taxes, a move that would likely prompt the state to suspend their retail licenses. Supporters and opponents of the lawsuit agree that the case threatens the entire state-sanctioned marijuana industry, not just the shops Corey represents. The lawsuit invokes the supremacy clause of the United States Constitution, arguing federal law is supreme over, and preempts, state or local law. A strict interpretation of that argument could pave the way for Colorado's own court system to find its state system for selling pot illegal. Corey called it an outside chance, but didn't seem concerned at the possibility. In my mind overtaxation is just as bad as prohibition, Corey told Nine News. Other pro-marijuana attorneys tell Nine News they are studying the suit, concerned about the wider impact it could have. It is a bit of a reckless argument, said Brian Vicent, a prominent lawyer on marijuana issues. There's a small chance that a judge may decide to follow through on the supremacy clause and question the validity of this program. We think that's a very marginal chance at best. The state attorney general's office scoffed at the lawsuit. Mr. Corey's claims are bizarre and lack legal and logical consistency, said Carolyn Tiller, spokesperson for Attorney General John Sithers. We will aggressively defend the state against any legal challenge. Corey, who has had his own legal troubles with marijuana, is used to butting heads with government officials and even other pro-marijuana activists. He made headlines for handing out free joints as part of his fierce opposition to the 2013 ballot question which enacted state taxes on marijuana, a move critics say resulted in more scrutiny and stricter local regulations of marijuana from the city of Denver. Opponents of the tax question were upset that lawmakers included a sales tax not originally envisioned by Amendment 64, but Colorado voters approved the amendment by a two-to-one margin. In Spain, the local tells us, a cannabis club in Barcelona has been closed down for suspected drug dealing, the first closure of its kind in what could be a blow to the city's growing reputation as a hub for marijuana tourism. The club in the city's Sadat Vela district was shut down after police officers spotted a man approaching tourists and taking them to the club to buy drugs. Later inspections of the premises revealed marijuana packaged for sale, a price list for the drug and a set of scales. All of this meant the club was breaking the law. In Spain, it is illegal to traffic cannabis, and smoking in public places could mean a stiff fine. On the other hand, it's legal to grow cannabis for personal use and smoke it in private. Barcelona's popular cannabis clubs have made use of this legal grey zone and are tolerated by authorities as long as they don't actually operate as a business. And the Libya Herald reports, two major drugs busts in the last 48 hours have netted police and customs officials around 15 tons of hashish. The first discovery was made yesterday on a Liberian flagged container vessel docked in Benghazi. Police, acting on a tip-off, searched three refrigerated containers and found around five tons of cannabis. It is not yet clear where the containers were loaded. The vessel, which has not been named, reportedly last called at Malta. In the second bust today it comes, the local CID with members of the public prosecutor's office swooped on a vessel identified as the Miss Regensburg which had arrived from Senegal. Sniffer dogs were used to detect containers where the drugs had been hidden, at the bottom of crates loaded with vegetables and fruits, including watermelons. The haul of around 10 tons is one of the largest made in the recent campaign against drug smuggling. It is alleged that the crates were to be delivered to a local food importer. Both consignments of cannabis are to be destroyed in front of the public prosecutors. And back home in the UK, ITV says, border force officers at the Channel Tunnel in trance in Coquelles, France seized approximately two tons of cannabis resin. The drugs, which have an estimated street value of £5 million, were found on Thursday, when officers stopped and searched a Spanish-registered lorry and its load of furniture. Francias Coyavia Santiago Solera, 43, appeared at Canterbury Magistrates Court on Friday charged with the importation. He pleaded not guilty, and was remanded in custody. He will next appear at Canterbury Crown Court on the 23rd of June. And on the other side of the planet, the West Australian reports, the Abbott government won't be forcing people on unemployment benefits to submit to random drugs tests.
Social Services Minister Kevin Andrews sparked speculation about a potential drug testing for the Dole scheme by refusing to rule it out at the weekend. But after Prime Minister Tony Abbott made it clear he was cool on the proposal, Mr Andrews now says it is off the table. It's out, he told the BC Radio on Monday. The decision will disappoint coalition backbencher George Christensen, who believes the measure would help prevent taxpayer dollars being used to fund people's drug habits. It could be a simple random drug testing process done with swabs at the local Centrelink office, Mr Christensen told the ABC on Monday. It wouldn't necessarily be an overly onerous system, he says. If you're doing it in a random way it doesn't have to be costly. He says it's about more than just saving money, it's also about ensuring the integrity of the welfare system and making people more job ready. And he says he'd be happy to set an example by undergoing tests himself. I'd be happy to support that. I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. It might make a few Greens MPs nervous, but it wouldn't make me worried at all. Former Mission Australia Chief Executive Patrick McClure is currently conducting a major review of the welfare system for the government. And just when you think you heard everything, the Daily Liberal gives us a new one. A man who smeared Vegemite in a plastic bag in an attempt to disguise the smell of cannabis has appeared in Dubbo local court on a charge of possessing a prohibited drug. Daniel Paul Kelly pleaded guilty when he represented himself before Magistrate Janet Stevenson. The 36-year-old from Lightning Ridge was stopped by police at Dubbo Railway Station at 10.30 a.m. on April 16. Prosecution facts tendered to the court said police drug dog, Beave detected an illegal substance in a duffel bag being carried by Kelly. Police said a small amount of Vegemite had been placed in a plastic bag containing two grams of cannabis. Kelly told officers, I put it there so you fellas wouldn't smell the pot. The court heard Kelly had no prior record. It is your choice to use the drug, Magistrate Stevenson said. Cannabis is illegal and penalties will flow. Magistrate Stevenson did not proceed to a conviction but warned Kelly he would be convicted and fined if police picked him up again. She ordered the drug seized by police to be destroyed. This has been your weekly news report on the 420 radio show and we're wishing you cannabis feels forever.
Ever wondered what's in your prescription medications? Ever noticed the long list of side effects that most medications come with? Even listing risk of death? Does it make sense to put something into your body that could cause death while you only strive to be healthy? Prescription medications do not work for everyone, and most have serious side effects, causing your supplies of prescriptions to increase for treating symptoms that other medications cause. Fortunately for Canadians, Health Canada provides a safe, natural alternative for you. At the turn of the 20th century, cannabis was the most widely used medicine in the world, with over 5,000 years of recorded use and not one single recorded death. It has been used successfully for a number of conditions due to the unique medicinal qualities of the natural plant. In 2000, Health Canada approved the medicinal use of cannabis for a wide range of conditions to improve the lives of Canadians. Side effects of cannabis may include increased appetite, dry mouth, euphoria, or drowsiness. As with any medication, care must be taken when initially treating conditions with cannabis until the proper dose is established. Cannabis may not be for everyone, but it may be a healthy alternative for you. Talk to your doctor or contact us online at anybody who watches it. Um, it's going to be very apparent, you know, that this medicine is really achieving some amazing things. That we're we're just we were just talking uh, about weed the people off there, and then we just clicked on air. So, uh, yeah, we were but just weed talking. the people. Actually, they just started following the show on Twitter. Um, the producer. So I'm going to yeah, try. Excellent. I'm going to try and get in contact with them. I mean, uh, obviously, I would love to have Ricky on the show, but not not because she's Ricky, but more so because I've seen clips of this and it's so personally done, eh? Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, um, and that's what we need. We need faces on the medicine. You know, like it. It's nice I, to see these high, 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 well-known celebrities getting little literally high there's a good chance they're compassionate you know. too but no but they're getting <laughs> they're 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 helping bring the exposure to the forefront yeah. a little quicker yeah. than than no, little rinky dink sure. shows like this could you know oh, yeah. yeah and so many of us have been in the weed closet for so long too just, just think about what chong did for rick simpson well yeah, yeah exactly right exactly that propelled Rick Simpson. Now, speaking of Rick Simpson, uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, having Rick on the show a couple of times now. He's a great man to talk to, and and mm-hmm. and just uh, I think people, uh, a lot of people, have a different idea as to who he is. Um, and <laughs> and I'm sure you've gotten to know him quite well, Justin. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I kind of if I was if somebody was going to ask me uh, what I thought of Rick Simpson, I would have to say Grandpa. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, now you have uh, tried to continue his work um, and and help along with that and and do your part. Um, you're concentrating in extracts and stuff like that, right? Yes, um, I focus on, you know, publicizing the information. Um, I also help patients acquire oil, but mainly I, you know, have been promoting and publicizing and sharing this information because, you know, all these people are doing these great things, but, you know, there really hasn't been, you know, obviously mainstream awareness about it. So I've just been doing what I can to help more people learn about it and, um, you know, CannabisExtractReport.com has, you know, it seems like it's doing a pretty good job. And to this day, um, there is no other single resource out there, you know, on a single page that has, you know, all the information in one place. 
That's that's amazing, man. Like, I mean, I I've heard a lot of good things about you. Last time you were on the show, I think Jess, you were with us, or was it Chris that was with us? No, it wasn't me. It must have been Chris. I think it was Chris that was with us, and right. and uh, I got to tell you, brother, everybody was blown away by your knowledge, uh, the way you you uh, vocalize what you're trying to get across. Mm -hmm. um, it it you know I'm. I'm not big on the scientific side of things. Um, I'm at this point 50 years old with a lot of different things wrong, and I I just want my fucking medicine. And um, <laughs> so so when I hear all these uh, these you know scientific terms and, and and all that, I tend to to take a step back and go, whoa whoa whoa, whoa wait a minute, I want to hear some layman's terms here. So. Um, I was wondering if you could indulge me for a minute. I have type 2 diabetes. I've had it now for about four years, and I control it with two pills a day. Thank God. Um, I've been told uh, by several people, uh, both including Lori and Jess, that um, uh, one of the reasons why I'm able to control it is probably because of the mass amounts of cannabis um, that I ingest and use on a daily basis now i've also been told by people who see me on a regular basis that when i don't have my cannabis i'm a grumpy fucking asshole um, <laughs> i've been told uh we were talking about this a little bit on our break but i've been told that um quite easily uh the maintenance dose uh, could help me get to the point where i don't need it at all is that about right yeah um, I think you, don't, you don't need your medications like your traditional medication yeah i'd like to get to the point where i don't have to take any metformin at all i definitely believe that you can get there with, yeah i concur along with yeah. probably you know dietary adjustments that go along mm -hmm. with so i mean i that, can't eat any cheeseburgers be, and shit anymore easier to achieve by consuming higher doses you know, I, I had I had the chance um, uh, of uh, having a month's worth of, of RSO. And mm -hmm. um, I tell you, there was a little bit of a getting used to it. Uh, but then once I got used to it, I, I felt like I was 20 years old. Right. Okay. Yeah. It, wow. It's it, sometimes when you're in that uh, downward spiral, it gives you that extra kick. You just need to get going you know sometimes people just can't get going if they could they would keep going right and so I always found that it's good for that you know maybe I do need more exercise or maybe I do need to control what I'm consuming more but finding the willpower to do that and the extra kick in the ass came from cannabis yeah oh yeah definitely I mean I know there's been times when I've been really depressed and, and just kind of couching it and staring at the TV for days and then somebody comes in and lights up a doobie and I'm like woo how you doing we were, we were talking uh, uh, off the air there with Justin about the effects of high dosages and, yeah. and how we've seen it, um, it I think Justin agreed that he's seen it positively affect people with type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. too so well, I know it helps. I know it helps my depression, which uh, quashes my stress, which keeps my levels. You know, so I. Um, inter can, I'd like to just say um, to Justin, thank you very much for the. I don't know if it was the last time you were with us. The time um, when we discussed. I have to say, when you were talking about homeostasis and your theory behind how the extract works and the cannabinoid deficiencies and all that, it was like all of a sudden all kinds of shit in my brain just fell right into place. And now when people say to me, oh, well, there's no way it can work on so many different things, I fall back to that because that is the reason and the basis for which it – and the only way that makes sense that it can address so many different issues, so many different symptoms, so many different acting as a regulator. Diseases. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, for all your other systems, right. So, so, Justin, so you, can you just restate what it was that, in a nutshell that, that you said that time? For everybody? Yeah, I would actually love to, to quickly go over what seems to be the basis behind why cannabis 
seems to work against Please so many do. conditions. So we um, will mute you know, our mics. Brought up that all humans and not just humans, but all vertebrates, all vertebrates have endocannabinoid systems, which are is comprised of a network of cannabinoid receptors and endocannabinoids, which includes anandamide and 2-AG or 2 arachnid dinoglycerol. Um, so, and this system emerged very early in evolution, 600 million years ago. Um, it was like in, in sea skirts or something, where right. this endocannabinoid system started to evolve. And its purpose seems to be because, you know, once uh, life got to a certain point in evolution, things started becoming more complex and there needed to be some kind of system to connect the other systems together. So with the endocannabinoid system, its role seems to be to maintain systemic homeostasis. So it maintains, you know, an internal stable environment and balance in all body systems, cardiovascular, nervous, um, endocrine, um, just everything, everything, you know, is controlled ultimately by the endocannabinoid system and is, uh, maintained in balance. So if you think of any disease as, you know, falling out of homeostasis and, um, yeah, and, and that kind of imbalance, and then the endocannabinoid system restoring homeostasis, then, you know, that makes sense why it would affect so many diseases. But another thing that I really think is at the heart of things is postsynaptic feedback, um, because when cells communicate, they're, you know, the presynaptic cell sends a message to the postsynaptic cell. Um, but what endocannabinoids do is they complete the circuit um, by the or 2-AG specifically is synthesized on demand at the postsynaptic cell. So once it receives a message, it creates 2-AG. It sends that molecule back upstream to the presynaptic cell to get feedback. So like in the case of something like multiple, scler multiple sclerosis, you know, that presynaptic cell might be firing too quickly. Um, and then, you know, you get like uh, spasms and such. But then when you put in cannabinoids, then that... Um, takes over that role of the postsynaptic feedback, the, po the postsynaptic cell can give feedback and say, you know, hey, you're firing too quickly, slow down, and then the problem corrects itself. And I think that that is really at the heart of so many diseases, that when the body can communicate properly, it can heal anything. Um, and that's, you know, this is, it's all just theory, but based on what I've seen with all these diseases being essentially put in your remission with cannabis extract therapy, um, you know, this postsynaptic feedback and homeostasis theory, it explains everything. It's like none of this is coming out of nowhere. Everything has a very sound scientific basis to it, and it's completely supported by the anecdotal evidence. Now, can you do me a huge favor, please? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good, Jess. Now, can, would lighter. you yeah, Would you do me a huge favor now? Can you repeat that slowly? For a, yeah. <laughs> for a, for somebody who's uh, just not very scientific, if you wouldn't mind. Or type it out and send it to me so I can put it on our website even better. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, well, so in short, you know, the endocannabinoid system is the super regulatory system of the body. The cannabinoid receptors um, and endocannabinoids, which are, you know, cannabinoid-like molecules produced by the body, very similar to THC and CBD. Okay. Um, they maintain homeostasis throughout the body through a wide variety of mechanisms, um, the chief of which, I believe, is postsynaptic feedback so that cells can communicate both ways. Okay. Um, another really great analogy for that is in computer networking. When computers talk to each other, um, the receiving terminal will send an ACK or a NAC signal back, which is acknowledgement or negative acknowledgement. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you send a message to someone and it doesn't go through, then the receiving terminal will send a negative acknowledgement signal um, saying that that message didn't go through. And you can imagine that if that didn't exist, if there was no, you know, response, then, you know, no messages would get through, the Internet wouldn't work, everything would just break apart. But when... Um, you know, there is feedback and everything works perfect. You have the internet, you know, networking works. Um, so basically endocannabinoids seem to be that role of, of completing the circuit of communication. And when the body communicates, um, you know, it can recognize cancer cells. It can recognize, uh, autoimmune disorders like, you know, all, you know, lupus, MS, fibromyalgia. These are all autoimmune disorders where the body does not communicate correctly, where it is attacking itself. And then you give cannabinoids, suddenly everything's talking together again and the body just starts working. Um, it just, it, it really is the, the perfect medicine for the human body.
Yay! Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah, we're here. Well, I just that you're still here. <laughs> so we're no. I'm here too. I I got a phone okay. call, and that's why I was just listening. So continue sure, talking. <laughs> now I'm back. There's an, if you have, there's another thing I would like to really point out quickly about um, cancer, um, because there's all this evidence the human body is programmed to have cannabinoids kill cancer cells. For one, endocannabinoids like in men also kill cancer cells. So. Um, you know, if you put THC in your body and there's already a chemical very similar to THC killing cancer cells in your body right now, you know, it just makes sense that this is going to work, which is, you know, the number one uh, refute that I hear is that, you know, oh, THC kills cancer cells in the lab, but, you know, the human body is so much more complex, it probably wouldn't work in the body. Um, my response is no, it should work better in the human body than in culture cells because we are, you know, we have a uh, receptor that. system that is um, programmed to use it. And it's not just that endocannabinoids kill cancer cells, but there are many types of cancer cells that have larger expression levels of cannabinoid receptors than healthy cells, which would indicate that it's a possible defense mechanism against cancer. Um, you know, the body has many innate defense mechanisms to stop cancer from spreading. So one of them could be, you know, if a healthy cell becomes cancerous, become cancerous, it would be programmed to develop more cannabinoid receptors so that the natural anandamide in the body would, you know, floating around would latch onto that receptor and trigger apoptosis. Um, so, um, and so many diseases are thought to be cannabinoid deficiency. So by supplementing the body with cannabinoids, it will both, you know, help supplement that postsynaptic feedback process and, you know, do the same roles as the endocannabinoids. So, like, with cancer, if you flood your body with THC um, that also kills cancer cells like anandamide, it makes sense that, you know, it would work very well, and that's what we are seeing, these, you know, stunning results, very quick remission, very quick results, um, and that, you know, just makes sense that if the body was programmed to have cannabinoids kill cancer cells, like the study suggests, you would see results like that. Um, yeah, it just, it just makes so much sense, and it, I'm just boggled that people, you know, are still so resistant to it um, when the evidence is just so strong. Well, that's it. It's it's like the the cannabinoids are assisting your body to battle the cancer on its own, rather than like it never ever made sense to me that oh you have cancer here let's destroy your immune system. Oh God. Mm -hmm. You know, that makes um, me so sick we can even hack to hear around that. And see what the hell we can do. It, it made no sense to me whatsoever. Just, just the fact that you can that, that somebody even says something like that, it just makes what? me sick. <laughs> that they've got to rip you down to bring you back up. Yeah. Why not bring burn, you? Why not bring you back? It up doesn't make to sense. Bring you We've back gone up. down the wrong path as humanity in terms of medicine. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when you see people on chemotherapy, like the chemo doing that to people, you know, making you lose your hair and get sick and throw up, like it's clearly not the right way to go. And that's all cancer, you know, research right now is on, it's not on, you know, different types of chemotherapy. It's just, you know, like more of it's, you know, still the same path. Like, and that path is simply wrong. Single chemicals, the human body did not evolve the process, you know, chemotherapy or any single chemical. That's why you have all these side effects because all organisms evolve eating foods that have hundreds of compounds in it. When you put a single molecule in your body, um, you know, it usually isn't going to respond well, and that's what you see with pharmaceuticals. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're synthetic um, things that don't belong there, never were there, and yeah, exactly. It's, it's your body fighting back against what it is that they're giving you to, quote-unquote, heal you. Exactly. It does work in some cases, though, doesn't it? Well, I give you a case. I give you. I give you a case. I give you a case in point. Okay, uh, a very good friend of mine uh, has a, well had a Hep C. Uh, lived with it for years and years and years. Got it from a blood transfusion. Uh, smoked uh, cannabis when he could get it, and it did help him. But he wasn't an avid smoker. Uh, he decided to take the step and go for chemo radiation treatment or whatever the treatment is to reverse and get rid of the hep C. And it worked for him after, you know, eight months of, like, excruciating pain and grossness yeah. and throwing up. And, and he lives three hours from any hospital that can, 
you know, get medicines to them and stuff like oh. that. So it's all shipped to them and stuff. And but then if you had just gone on the oil, you know, it, it, I have to say, okay, I I I'm I don't have a medical degree. I, I've been sick off and on most of my life, but um, I have some <coughs> common sense, okay? And common sense would dictate to me that. If you look at what happens and people get a cancer and then they get uh, chemotherapy or radiation or it hacked out or whatever the hell they do with it, um, or any of the above all combination of the three, um, and then they get another cancer in a different location, mm -hmm. what, what Justin is saying makes more sense to me than anything I've ever heard because if you are having something... Um, uh, present as cancerous repeatedly in different locations it it it, it would tend to f to m make me think it's something within your body that's doing it and it's not that particular site okay mm -hmm. so if you have something that may show you have a predisposition to developing say breast cancer and you go and you have every bit of muscle tissue removed off your chest because you may have a predisposition. Is that to is that, that like the, the thing? Is that the thing Angelina that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Angelina okay, so Jolie did that. Yeah. What's stopping that 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 predisposition from popping up somewhere else? Hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I've I've Not I've that. heard a lot of women chatting right. about that subject though. I, that I seriously very believe that. What, I seriously believe that in what Justin said. Nothing. I I think it's. I think it's. You have to treat it systemically rather than locally. As oh look, there's a bump. But but the women who are doing what she what Angelina Angelina Jolie did are just saying they're being proactive because it runs in the family and they have the gene. Yeah, a gene that could could or it, could it, not. Could uh, could come into her uterus, or it could yeah. come into her ovaries, or it could come into somewhere else. But isn't my this mom, isn't this? My mom had liver, I mean, uh, kidney cancer. Okay? Yeah. Um, she had a, a kidney removed because they said that when she had her back pain, they did X-rays and oh, it was gone. So they had to remove what was left, but the other one was fine. And so she went through, you know, you you go for your exams every six months, and it's every year. And 18 years later, guess what? She had, um, well, we went through everything. Um, they came to her in March and said, oh, you don't have TB and you don't have lung cancer and you don't have histoplasmosis and you don't have any of these things in March. But in May, she was dying with metastasized cancer, metastatic cancer in her lungs. But I guess it's because renal cancer, once it moves to your lungs, doesn't look like lung cancer. When So then when they took the chunk of the lung, they went, oh, it's not lung cancer? How absurd is that? So, the, the, you yeah, know, that's crazy. here's the thing, because we really only touched on the topic of high dosages. And, oh, what yeah. people are, and you know, um, probably what Justin notices as well as I do is that when you get to those very high doses of a gram or more a day that you can cure diseases, especially cancer has been probably proven more than most. So mm -hmm. the thing is, is that there is a large group of people who cannot get to those high dosages. There are, there's what I think it's a 1% group, which is enough. That's a large amount of people to me. Yeah. Uh, because there's a lot of cancer patients here in Nova Scotia. I don't know about anywhere else. And that who can't get to those high dosages and who have opted for chemo and cured their cancer mm. but still continue to do low dosages of cannabis and, you know, continue to ward off any works. future. Can and I, I'm, not, I'm not going to say never, ever, ever do chemo because there's, a new, there's new chemos coming out yeah. and they do this – what chemo does and radiation does and what cannabis does is it's all ceramide production. And so whether it's from a synthetic substance or whether it's a natural substance, it's better than not 
treating it if it's an aggressive mm -hmm. thing. And so I want to be careful about saying never ever do chemo because there's a new chemo called Tarsiva that just cured somebody I know. I say never and ever he do wasn't chemo. sick and he didn't suffer and so and now he's quite healthy and he's still continuing to use cannabis what we call a maintenance dose which is what we suggest to everybody even after they've cured their cancer. So how much is the maintenance so, dose? Oh, that's a good that's a good topic that we should talk and about. And what a lot. would that cost? People always say how what? much, and the answer is always it's totally dependent on the patient, and everybody should be treated as an individual. So start mm -hmm. at a very low dose, and you know if you're already taking cannabis, then you know uh, maybe a maintenance dose would be. Uh, my suggestion might be let let me rephrase that. If it were me. <laughs> I would stop taking it four times, four, four times a day at that high level, which would be at least a quarter gram of cannabis oil four times a day. But I would just switch it to at the bedtime dose. Now, is, okay. is that I, yeah. undiluted with anything, or just just flat out? I always out? mix all cannabis with coconut oil, okay. and I do. Excellent. Believe, Excellent. I knew that. I do believe <laughs> that it's better than hemp oil. I'm sorry, and it's only because of processing. Uh, not for any other reason, it, but it's equal nutritionally. But co uh, it also coconut oil. It has and it's some a good medicinal. Fat, yeah, it has some medicinal value itself. That's right. Yeah. It's a, saturated fat in a non-animal form is right. And hemp seed oil is right. eighty-four percent non non saturated. And it Correct. and yeah, it, it's mainly polyunsaturated poly omega six and omega three. Right. right. So I'm, not, I'm not downplaying hemp oil. I'm just tr saying that I recommend cannabis. Well, yeah. Oil. Any of us that use it, that use hemp seed oil, it's cold pressed hemp seed oil. Right. Yep. Yeah. Can you explain but what that means? Ex explain what that it's means, It's actually please. twice the cost of can uh, of the coconut oil. Eh? What, what, what would you recommend, Justin? One sec, Laurie. And one sec. Uh, can you explain what cold press means, please? First. So, oh, cold pressed hemp seed oil means that the process used to to produce the oil from the hemp seeds is a cold press rather than heating it. Okay. Because heating it um, reduces or destroys the omega three and six fatty right. acids. Okay. Right. right. Okay. Now you can continue. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Justin. Um, so what would you, what would you recommend? So in terms of like a regimen, I think that it's great to have a lot of hemp seed oil in your diet in general because omega-3s have been shown to be essentially the foundation of the endocannabinoid system, both the receptors and the um, uh, endocannabinoids themselves. But for like mixing the, for mixing cannabis oil directly with another oil, I believe coconut oil is better because um, cannabinoids are fat soluble and saturated fat. Right. Um, it seems to just uh, dilute better into it. And I've heard of the cases where people have uh, com combined it with coconut oil. They seem it seems to increase the bioavailability and increase um, the time that it takes to metabol to, to metabolize the cannabinoid right. so that it's in your system longer. Um, I one of the or go on. I, I just want to say I also notice patients that they notice less of an up and down in their high when they mix it with coconut oil. That would make sense. Yeah. I, yeah. I've had both. I've I've had the chance of trying both, and I got to say that I um, I didn't feel as queasy with the with the coconut oil. Right, right, right. Yeah. And so, what about a maintenance dose, Justin? What what do you think that would be considered? I think like you know, point one to point two grams every day or every other day would uh, be good. I I definitely think it's important to keep ingesting it. I don't believe that smoking would be an adequate maintenance dose because you're you know overheating the cannabis. Um, you're processing it through your lungs instead of the digestive system. But right. uh, I I really don't believe that you need much. Um, and I believe that in the future everybody will be able to take large quantities of high CBD oil and raw cannabis medicine like THCA and CBDA which have no, no psychoactive effects so people can take them whenever they want and um, I do believe that it will eventually be proven that raw cannabinoids like THC acid and CBD acid will be better for treating cancers and other diseases than decarboxylated THC. J so, uh, um, Jameson of, has... Know, people have, having trouble working up to the right dosage yeah. because of the psychoactivity, I, I think that's on its way out. Jameson has already right. said they're going to jump into the, that market. Right. 
right? right. You know, they do a lot of, of, of herbal stuff, right? Jameson, what is it? Jameson, I don't know the whole name of their company, but I, I read an article. They said that they are going to jump into the cannabis market. Yeah, they, they do a lot it, of supplements. Yeah. Like, not the Actually, good supplements. They're the cheap, crappy supplements. The CEO, uh, the, the fellow that's been <laughs> sorry, CEO Jameson. of Jameson for the last 21 years. Thanks. Just, I needed uh, some of that stuff. No, I'm kidding, Jess. <laughs> well, sorry, what was that, Lori? I said the fellow who's been the CEO of Jameson for the last 21 years has just uh, uh, moved over to a cannabis company here in Canada. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, I, I was I was just using them as a reference. I mean, there there's a lot of companies that are coming out with with their own versions <laughs> of this and that, right? What are you laughing at, Jess? I sampled a bubble gum at the <laughs> Safe Access Now dot uh, the Safe Access Now conference that was absolutely amazing. It it helped every muscle in my body relax. It was just lovely. I have heard candies that I yeah. Same sort of thing. I've had candies and I really enjoyed them. Yeah, and cookies too. Like I mean, I, I'm a, I'm Truffles, love Truffles. love. Uh, I, somebody's never sent me them yet. Um, I, I, you know what? The guy <laughs> that makes our truffles doesn't like me anymore. Darn it! Oh god! <laughs> Darn it! And I told him, you know, the fact that you don't like me shouldn't affect the fact that you make truffles for all these sick people. Truffles. You know, but oh, uh, um, butter but, creams yeah. it. Butter creams work really good too, eh? <laughs> yeah, I can try that. That's we made good. some uh, medicated butter tarts uh, last year sometime, and they were. So there's there's um, um, chocolate truffles mm. and maple walnut. Um, butter creams and orange butter creams. So we're it's, 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 it's my really... birthday and I have all this cake here. I'm telling you because I get to watch. <laughs> People keep bringing you cake. It's, I got a I got a a cupcake daisy. I oh, don't know. Cool. It's cool though. It's really cool. So <laughs> listen, folks. I wanted to uh, give. Uh, we're getting close to the end of the show. I wanted to give everybody a chance to uh, you know chat about what they wanted to chat about and I'd like to start with uh, uh, Justin and and see if he wanted to add anything or, or update anything and then we'll we'll let uh, Elizabeth uh, talk about her, her visit at uh, ASA in uh, where was it DC wasn't it yeah it was the DC conference cool, the cool. Conference. I was actually there too on Sunday I wish well, I could you see go. you there uh, dude I had a smectabulous time uh, <laughs> Do, all right, all right, do you have anything you want to plug? Because I'll move right into how much I support that organization. Uh, um, I guess uh, all I can really plug is CannabisExtractReport.com, which I just updated again on June 2nd. Um, if you, uh, you know, everybody should read it. Just, just see ha how extensive this is, how many patients are report, you know, reporting remissions with cannabis oils, all the... Um, you know, rising names in this, like Dr. Raphael Michel, who discovered THC, has called clinical trials of cannabis and cancer, of cannabis and cancer, because of the weight of this evidence. Stephen DeAngelo, who runs the largest dispensary in the country, is you know reporting weekly skin can cancer successes out of his um, establishment. There's Jeff Ditchfield, who is working with uh, some of the leading researchers in Spain, Guillermo Velasco and Dr. Manuel Guzman won a documentary called Project Storm, which follows six terminal cancer patients using uh, cannabis oils to wow. treat the cancers. Um, and it goes really in-depth into the science. Like, he is interviewing, you know, the researchers. Um, so that, that proje project is similar to the Phoenix Five in that it actually tracks terminal cancer patients from start to finish. So people, you know, just can see that this really does work. Um, there, there's so much other stuff in it. I guarantee anybody who reads it, it is literally impossible to say that cannabis extracts have not worked against cancer in humans. Like I've seen people try, and it is, it's not pretty. Like, it's, the evidence is just so overwhelming. Um, it, it's very clear this works and that it needs – we need to both research it and access it. We need to find what cannabinoid and, and terpenoid profiles work best against which diseases and which patient population. Um, and I really believe that that research is going to take off soon, and that's what I'm fighting for. Woohoo! Woo! Yeah. That's, that's cannabisextractoils.com. Is that what? 
I'm writing it down Cannabis now. Extract. CannabisExtractReport.com CannabisExtractReport.com yeah. I, I want to say I've been guilty of not reporting and I'm going to <laughs> Justin you've inspired me and I'm going to hopefully inspire all our patients to report as well Woo Well yeah we should definitely stay, stay in touch I would certainly like the contact info of everybody uh, on, on here we can definitely you know keep in touch yes. I have to say, you sound a lot, uh, very much like my partner, Chris Enns. You, you, listening to you reminds me of listening to him. So, sometimes, sometimes we have to listen very hard. And, and because yeah, because they so both much. talk so fast. <laughs> We're so grateful <laughs> for that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show, Justin, and, and uh, you know, you're welcome anytime. Um, I, I would love to, uh, since we're talking about, uh, you know, success stories, I would love for patients to call in and, uh, you know, tell us their, their success stories. We're going to do that Ooh, sometime really soon. That's I a think good idea. Good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we should have yeah. a whole show just for Ooh, that. Ooh, that's a good idea. Spe speaking of success stories, the, yes. the, the ASA conference that Justin yes. and I were both at, Justin, you may have missed me because I was constantly in the hospitality room, room 315 with the vaporizers. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure that, that I, I was in there a couple times. Either that or I was down at the bar talking to the first financer, the primary financer of Americans for Safe Access. Uh, she can go to safeaccess.now uh, or safeaccessnow.org. Uh, this is my favorite cannabis lobby, and I love them all. I love the marijuana project uh, policy. I love the students for uh, sensible drug policy. But what really touched me about the ASA organization is that uh, they flew in people uh, from around the country who are making a difference in cannabis that could not afford to come to Washington, D.C. And, and they invited people. They had a very reasonable entrance fee to this conference. And people came from all around the country who have never stood up for their rights before. And uh, the ASA folks taught these people how to lobby. We... Uh, we socialized, we partied, there were different teach-ins all week, um, there were different discussions and topics, but the highlight and, and the climax of this conference was that you learned how to go on Capitol Hill and have your voice be heard door to door. And I think that is absolutely invaluable in this movement um, and critical because you have so many people discovering so many personal experiences and people feel so intimidated by the legal system and uh, Don and his crew at uh, safeaccessnow.org took the fear right out of it and it was a beautiful thing to see um, excellent wow. other than that uh, I've got uh, a couple things to suggest to people entertainment wise um, I there's a, a really good podcast ses session out of LA that's run by Don Adams and April O'Connor uh, that would complement this podcast session and I suggest some schmoozing among the two it's called it's called the session and the for session. the life of me I couldn't figure out like the reason for being there because I'm a workaholic Washingtonian and uh, <laughs> Really, it was there to eat the edibles and uh, get as high as possible without losing the mind. And I, I kept saying, you know, yes, but what is the agenda? What is the agenda? And they're, they're like, shut up and taste the cookie. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> peanut butter. And they're like, yes, that is the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really fun. You can uh, follow them at the Session Podcast on Twitter. Um, July, June 28th on a Saturday from 7 to 9 p.m., uh, Haywood Turnipseed Jr., another weed warrior in the world of comedy, will be joining me, uh, Ryan Schutt and Lars Loving, for another DCMJ fundraiser comedy show. We'll be doing another one Friday, July 11th. But for the Canadian crew that's listening, 
I want to tell you that Comic Ryan Shoot is coming your way for the North by Northeast uh, Festival, which is the uh, South by Southwest Festival here in the United States, Austin, Texas. It's its sister program. Right. And Ryan will be there uh, June 9th through the 12th, I, I believe. I'm I think looking. that's in Toronto. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yes. Nineteenth to the twenty-first. I correct. Right. Them. And he is someone. <laughs> I love. Thank you for the rim shot. <laughs> hey, we're we're full. So we're we're a full show here. You know. Come on. You know. <laughs> and and then uh, every year there we have an activist that you know he doesn't necessarily broadcast himself, but he has been. Every year, the founder uh, and organizer for <laughs> our July 4th smoke-in. And every year on July 4th at around 11 a.m., uh, we gather in front of the White House for a pro-legalization rally. And it's John Pilka that organizes this. And he brings in folks from all over the world that want to participate. And we have a speak-out. And then we march down Constitution Avenue to a concert stage set up by Billy Beam uh, and his band, The Unfortunate Sons. And we throw down and have a huge concert. So anyone out there listening that potheads are just a bunch of lazy sit around and cool. do things, we set up a full <laughs> stage with giant stacked amps and a professional sound man. <laughs> And it's not easy. <laughs> and we throw a free concert until the fireworks begin. Yeah, and speaking of concerts, <laughs> um, Peace East is happening uh, in Nova Scotia in Magnus Mines this year. It's a cannabis, we call it a, a cannafest or a meducation festival. Meducation. <laughs> I love and that. Meducation. Pardon, yeah. Lord? A can of camp out. Yeah, Canada Camp, camp, camp out. out or 420 Festival. So this is our fifth year now, and we found a solid uh, location. It's called Gittins Lodge, and it's in this little town called Magnus Mines. It's in the middle of a forest, so it can be as loud as we like for three days. Oh, hey, and man, I know a comic name. Can we run around boys. naked? That's what I want to know. <laughs> what, what was it? Say that again, Elizabeth. I said I know a comic named Elizabeth Croydon that would kill to be on that bill. <laughs> we'll, have to check. we'll have to talk. So and yeah, we are yeah, trying to bring people from across the country, uh, especially speakers about cannabis. So if you want to come and uh, you know just say shit for 15 minutes about cannabis and how it affected your life. We would love you to do that in between bands. That would be a great time. Oh and, yeah. Right and uh, and we for sure you know you know you can get in for free if you get up and speak so that, or if you volunteer that's another good way to get in for free but it's only thirty bucks at the door we usually have about twenty DJs and about five or six bands and uh, a couple of comedians is so Chris going to be performing Jess I, I had a great time uh, I believe in rock and roll ticks Al and and this platform sure. definitely suits that. Uh, if anyone would like to follow me on Twitter, I'm at E. Croydon, C R O Y, because weed should be legal, D O N. <laughs> C R O Y D O N. Do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, you can just put in my name, Elizabeth Croydon, in YouTube and catch some of my old, old, old works and. Uh, I got uh, two movies sold into distribution this year, and I'm trying to figure out what my fourth movie is going to be. Internet and I'm on radio Facebook. station I'm on about Facebook. pot, just saying. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> What's the date for PCs, Jess? Uh, August 15th, 16th, and 17th. So that's the weekend uh, just at, during the Perseids meteor shower. Ooh. So that's my yeah. 55th birthday. Ooh. Wow. So, Jess, is it, have, did, were you able to talk our, our buddy Ooh. that does uh, Repercussions Radio there to uh, perform? Or? Oh, right, Chris. Yeah. What, I, I might able? have to just have to try to get to Nova like Scotia. Get him into a... The reason I'm bringing it up is because it's a really cool show on Friday nights at 10 o'clock. Right. On Lifestyle and Radio. he's spinning as well. He promised me he would come. He's been in retirement for a little while other than online. He just, he just had a so gig, he, didn't he? He I, did. I think he just <laughs> he had a gig. To me that I think he did. I think he oh, mentioned good. he had he's one or he's, or he's going to be having me. one. What? 
He sucks for not telling me. I only live. Well, now, now, come on, now. I said I believe he. He (laughs) he did, or he is about to. Oh, okay. Maybe that's why. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) Maybe I forgot. Um, Justin. (laughs) As always, it is a pleasure, (laughs) my friend. I would love to have you on the show more often, buddy. Thank you. And Elizabeth, yes, it's, thanks for joining us, it's, Justin. Uh, finally, a pleasure to to chat. We've been chatting on Twitter for a little while now, Elizabeth and I. I've really enjoyed the 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 thing, the news items that you choose to put out on Twitter. I think what you're doing is vital, Al. I would love to be invited back. Uh, it was a delight to meet Justin and to schmooze with everybody. I I think that the community of cannabis needs to come together because weed are the world. Weed are the people. Weed are the people. Uh-huh. Weed are let's the all, people. Let's all grab our hands together and sing Kumbaya. <laughs> amen and a women. I'll sing Kumbaya if you get me high enough. <laughs> I'll even go into a hug circle. That sounds like a challenge accepted. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> And on August that 15th note, in Nova Scotia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the beat down. <laughs> All right. All right. The down. <laughs> it has it has been a slice, folks. Uh, we're away gonna, from the bar. We're gonna, yeah, thank you all for joining us. I love this couple hours every week. I look forward to Jess it. Jess has the giggles today. I can't wait to smell your plants. Oh. oh. Especially after the rain. If I've, you ever I've got, got some friends in... I've got some friends in Guelph. I, I'm a big fan of Night of a Thousand Accordions. Oh, there you go. <laughs> huh. You're going to have to let me know if you're coming up north of the border and come have coffee in the garden. I will. Look up the comedian Howard Dover, Howard uh, Dover. while you're there. He's out of Toronto and L.A. We know who he is. We, yeah. I know who he is. Yeah, he's great. I, I really good human, very good human. Very good human. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> he taught me that the uh, guy. Yeah. he taught me that the uh, vaporizer bag uh, from the volcano once used is excellent to base your turkey in on Thanksgiving. That's nice. Wow, that's a true story. <laughs> that is true. It's oh wow, well, jeez. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's the same polyester plastic. Wow, you know what? You know what? Like That's a really man, good idea. Some marijuana wine or some some weed whiskey. That would be, <laughs> Ooh. You know, well, you I, know I, what? Actually, actually right? now I'm talking about pure entertainment. <laughs> That's self-medicating. <laughs> I tried. I I I got <laughs> last year a couple of sample bottles of Mary Jane's uh, uh, and its hemp wine. Ooh. Yeah, I had I had a red Ooh. and I had a white, and and we actually uh, we tried it during our Passover dinner last year. Wow, yeah. Yeah. that sounds <laughs> yeah. like a lovely holy way to get in touch with the spirits. There you go. It was Passover pass. It passed over. <laughs> With an A plus, if you have hemp wine, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, we got to figure out some for those of us that don't partake. Imbibe is that the word? So, uh, do we have promo for next week, Al? No, not yet. No. Oh. No. Okay. No, no, I have no idea what's going on. We'll be well, here. I'll tell everyone to tune in. This has been fantastic, highly engaging, and I learned a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Folks, it's always a pleasure. And ladies, I will see you next week. Justin, you're free, feel free to call in anytime you want, my friend, and let us know if we can help with anything getting the word out. Uh, Elizabeth, awesome, no problem. Uh, please, please let me know when you got dates and stuff like that. We'll, I'll get Jess to make sure she, she makes a mention during our event. I listings. sure will, and I'll send you a couple yeah. of uh, cannabis experts that would really enjoy meeting you and being part of your program. Awesome, great, awesome, yeah, that would be awesome. Thank and you. On, and on that yeah. note, this is the 420 Radio Show. You can find us every day at 420, and a new live show Wednesdays at 420 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be here next week. Good night, everybody. Or good, good afternoon. Night, Enjoy your Thank snacks. You so much. Yeah, goodbye, to- John boy. <laughs> Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. One time for all my people growing weed. 
put their life on the line for what some people need. Running from the law over a fucking sea. <laughs> well, the law don't make any sense to me. Cause it's a plan, plan. a gift given to me and you. If you don't like it, then outlaw every flower too. Plan. A gift given to me and you. If you don't like it, then outlaw every flower too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause that's exactly what it is. They've been lying to the parents, swear it's good for the kids. You need some proof for the look what I did. Went from barely alive to teaching y'all how to live. But before the first hit, I was as bad as it gets. I'll be the first to admit I acted like a little bit. So to the one growing, that's a team up. Thanks, one love, we see ya. Call it Kelly, fuck till I'm silly Then call my dilly, scoop it silly Twist up a really, maybe in Philly I don't really be all that picky Blunder and ziggy, long as it's sticky Might even burn a spliffy, but won't smoke another ziggy Quit those ounces, try to flip those But learn fast that selling grass might walk around on your tiptoes Now why is it like that, who knows? To be exact, check the polls Less than 45% of America up pose Cause it's a plan, a gift given to me and you If you don't like it, then outlaw every flower too so, yeah. so to the one growing that in the cup, in the cup Thanks, thanks, we need you Put their life on the line for what some people need Running from the law over a fucking sea <laughs> Well the law don't make any sense to me You like music, you like weed Well we gonna be good friends indeed This is how much I like more than smoking trees They'll make you dance the do si do and teach you how to achieve a grow. Smoke a bowl on the 420 radio show. On Lifestyle Radio. What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? Trying to get on this Lifestyle Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's alright. Oh, hey, I might have it. You might have it. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Good evening. I'm Colter Wonkite. I'm already into the 420. 